rising food and gas prices, can we really afford to pay any more in tax? Yes, well, Labour has opposed the rise in national insurance and the Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Pat McFadden, joins us now. Pat, a very good morning to you. Obviously, um, you know, this is a Conservative policy. If uh, you were in government, what would you be doing? Well, he didn't need to. He didn't need to do this. If you look at how this started, he said this was necessary to fund the NHS and social care system last year, and then he made a, a mini budget a spring statement in Parliament a couple of weeks ago, where he decided to give half of what was he was proposed proposing to raise back to people. He did a partial U-turn on it, and then he said he would give the other half back in two years, just before. The general election. So, what started out as a tax proposal that was being advanced in order to fund NHS yeah, and that, social that's care did, Pat. has Pat, been Pat, chopped Pat, to bits Pat, now. Pat, it's been Pat, chopped to bits. Pat, that's what he did. That wasn't the question. What would you have done? Come on, Labour haven't got a policy in sight. What would it have been? Come on, tell us. Well, we wouldn't have raised taxes at this time. What we would have done, not on incomes, what we would have done at this point was to levy a windfall levy on the oil and gas companies who are making a fortune out of the current spike in prices. We read in the newspapers today that Shell hasn't paid a penny tax in the UK for four years. And these companies are making a fortune right now. And the proposal that we've advanced for some months is to put a windfall levy on those companies in order to help particularly the poorest people meet the shocking energy bills that they have right now. OK, so, so tax the rich, is that, is that right? Uh, no, that's, that's, I wasn't talking about incomes at all. I was saying okay. we should put a windfall levy on the excess profits of the oil and gas companies. Let me give you an example. Uh, the chief executive of BP said that the current energy market was a cash machine for his company. Mm. The chief executive of Shell said it was a momentous year. Well, it is a momentous year for those companies. Uh, and we think it's right that they should be asked to pay a bit more in corporate taxation in order to help people who are really struggling with their fuel bills right now. OK, no, fair enough. I mean, you must be looking forward to the next election, presumably, because at the moment you're actually kind of onto a bit of a winner, aren't you? I mean, people are feeling the pinch. People are feeling poorer. You know, even Conservatives aren't quite sure whether or not Boris Johnson is still a Conservative. Surely, 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 Labour are going to make massive gains. All you need now is for Keir Starmer to tell us what he thinks about anything. Well, look, well, of course we want the next election to come because families are really struggling now. We've got the biggest squeeze on living standards uh, since the 1950s. And if you look at the other major developed economies, we are the only country, we've got the only government among the G7 countries who is increasing taxes this year. And by the time we get to the next election that you uh, mentioned there, seven out of eight taxpayers will be paying more, even if the government goes ahead with its proposed penny tax reduction uh, just in time for the election. And to stand back and take a look at it, of course you've got to take decisions about tax as a government, whether that's on the oil companies or whether it's on individuals. But tax shouldn't be used as this uh, game-playing that we've seen from the Chancellor hey, Pat, in Pat, Pat, Pat. Pat. Come on. about Pat's got, you I've got a I've got I've got a member of the Labour Party here yeah. telling me telling me that tax can't be used to play games. I mean, come on. Labour Labour's done about turn on this, haven't they? I mean, La are you telling me that under a Labour government people will pay less tax? Uh, what I'm saying to you is that tax you shouldn't tax by saying I want families to pay more right. in the midst but of we're not going to pay less tax, are we? So that I, the Chancellor Rishi Sunak, uh, can offer you half of it back in two years' time. Why should families right now be asked to pay more? Tell you what, come on, give it a guarantee, Pat. Pat. Give it a guarantee. Come, come on, come, come on, give it a guarantee. Under, uh, tell me, tell me what I'm voting for. Under Labour, under Labour. Come on, you're onto a winner here, Pat. You could, you could convince the nation. Under Labour. Are we going to pay less tax? That's what we all care about. We'll publish our tax proposals when we come to the election. We're two years away from that. that, right that, that, that that's <laughs> a, a no, then. I'll take that as. Um, let me ask you a slightly different question. Uh, the Business Secretary, Kwasi Kwarteng, has launched uh, this scientific review of fracking. Uh, 
in the past, the Labour has called for bans on fracking. What is your position now, given where we are as a, as a nation, given that you yourself acknowledge that families are going to be struggling for the foreseeable future? We do not have energy security in this country in the way that we should. What is Labour's position on resuming fracking? Well, it never worked when we, it was tried a few years ago, so I don't think the case for that has been proven, whether the geology means it is a cheap source of energy here in the UK. There was an attempt for some years. It didn't happen before, and we're not convinced that the situation has really changed since it was stopped a few years ago. So you're for a ban on fracking, you're for uh, the ban on fracking continuing, is that what you're saying? Because we, we uh, I don't know if you caught up with the uh, show before ours, Tom Harwood, he had an expert guest on who said, actually, what that position is sort of bogus. The kinds of uh, earthquakes and things like this that people bring up, they're, they're tremors, they're, they're barely harmful, basically. So in the light of that, isn't it time Labour changes its position? Well, of course, there's a debate about these things, and it's quite right to have a debate about it. But we haven't been convinced that the evidence that led to the stopping of fracking back in 2019 has really changed. So... Uh, by all means, you know, the Secretary of State has somebody to look at it, but we've not seen evidence to uh, convince us to reverse the position from three years ago. You're pro-nuclear now, then, are you? Uh, yeah, nuclear should be part of the mix going forward, definitely. Well, that's good. No, this is interesting. Sorry, the, the reason why I'm, I'm asking is because I'm, try I'm trying to tease out what Labour stands for, what you actually want. So you don't want fracking. You do want nuclear as a party, do you? Is that is that is that Labour's position yes. that they're going to they're going to literally yes. go nuclear? Yes. Good stuff. Right? Well, okay, fair. Well, yeah? nu nuclear power. Yeah. The problem with nuclear power has been it's very expensive, uh, and uh, if you can get the costs, then clearly there are attractions in a form of energy which doesn't put emissions into the. Uh, environment and doesn't mean you're reliant on someone like Putin to provide exactly. you with your energy uh, resource. So, of course, there are big attractions to that. But the problem with it so far uh, has been that the cost per unit of power, the unit of electricity you get, has tended to be very high. So there are still technological problems to be overcome. But if you can overcome those, it's obviously an attractive source of power when we want to be using more renewables and be less reliant on dictatorships around the world no. supplying our energy needs. Look, I, absolutely. And Pat, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate you, you frankly putting up with me so far. But I, but, I, but I have got I have got one more for you because I've, you know, obviously detected the accent there. Presumably, if Labour comes to power, then Scotland gets a referendum, do they? Is that Labour Party policy? Because that's actually something that's gone under the rug a bit. If people vote Labour, you get potentially an independent Scotland, don't you? Uh, that's not a policy, no. Is it not? Uh, you sure? So is that, is that not going to happen then? If Keir Starmer comes into power, we're not going to have a we're not going to have an independence referendum in Scotland, are we? No, we don't want another independence referendum. That's not a policy. Ah, oh, good stuff. All right.